All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to go over observability. And in previous videos, I've showed you guys how to set up a low key tempo Prometheus and Grafana. And so today, I'm going to kind of build on top of that. So if you need to set those up, you can look at a previous video or you can go through my Docker toolkit project and just deploy what's in there. Um, so what we're going to do first is kind of go over how you get stuff into there. So in the previous time, I've been using Prometheus to do scraping. And then the kind of the pain with that is say I set up another instance and I want to scrape some containers on it. I would have to set up another Prometheus and set it to forward over. Um, I've used Fluent Bit, Fluent D. I've used both versions. I've used Promtail. Then I've used the Open Telemetry Collector. And it's nice, but I always have to deploy multiple things on other nodes to get logs or something else to handle it. And I found this tool called Alloy. And what's really nice with Alloy is it has a built-in uh, scraper for metrics for Prometheus. It can do all kinds of format conversions. Like I can go from Prometheus to open telemetry, or like I can scrape log files and convert them to open telemetry log format. It has a built-in open telemetry collector. So I kind of just see it as a complete replacement for all those. Like you still need a Prometheus to store your metrics in, but this can at least forward metrics to that. So kind of how it looks. So this is like what we're gonna set up. We have Loki, Tempo, and Prometheus. We have a Grafana that's gonna read information out of those. Then we're gonna deploy an Alloy instance. One, I kind of call it like a standalone mode. So this is gonna forward in into these or like an ingester. And then this one is gonna have an open telemetry collector, which this one, oops, this one will as well. And we're going to scrape all the files on the node in there. We're also gonna discover all the containers and then create a custom label. So the label must say alloy logs enable equals true. And you can also do it with metrics which I'm still working on how you can, more labels to configure how it scrapes. I haven't really tested those out yet, but these ones at least work for the discovery. And then so any container that has this label, um, Alloy will discover it and then grab all the logs from it, forward them into Loki. So this is what we're gonna do. So I have these files here. So in my Docker toolkit project, very simple Docker Compose. So how you're gonna set it up is everything like normal, put it on the proxy network. And then what we're gonna do, this will just help cache some of the data that it's like in memory, help with some of the caching. It's gonna expose a UI so you can actually kind of look at your alloy configuration um, in the browser. And then we're gonna open up the open telemetry ports. So we have the collector available. And then this will get converted to a label called node name. So if they are different, like if your containers want to discover this over this host name, but you want the label to say this, that's what you can do. Um, so change that to whatever you want. I'm doing a naming convention of alloy dash, whatever the name is. Um, not a big deal, you can do whatever you want. That way I just know they're coming from that alloy instance. And then we're going to put in the Docker socket in read-only mode. We're going to copy in whichever config folder you want to Etsy Alloy. And then we're also going to copy in all the logs. And you can also make this read-only if you want. And then this you shouldn't have to change at all. And then this is because I want to get all the logs from Alloy and forward them. So to just, just to show how that works, I add this label. And then let's start with the standalone config. So this one I'm going to run locally. I have another one deployed on a node that we're going to look at. It's already running, so I'm just going to go through the config for it. So first what we can do is set up a discovery. So we're going to discover any containers and we're going to group them in this metrics and logs. And it's going to separate them based on the, the label value. So if they have this label, it'll register them in this discovery. 
And then I also was working on configuring the scraping with these labels, so we'll get back to that. And then the first one, let's do the open telemetry. So we're gonna set up this collector, then we're gonna set up the endpoints. So here's those ports we uh, did a binding on. And then it kind of works as this, uh, kind of like a pipeline, so it has an output. So from here, um, I'm gonna go into this memory litter, memory litter, memory limiter processor. And then so if I look down here in my processor section, this is just gonna do a memory limit. And then what's really cool is it's gonna create this service graph. So like if I go here, it's gonna create this service graph for me based off whatever uh, service names are coming through. And then from there, it's going to output everything into the batch exporter. And then so this is where I can figure it of how, like what service it's going into. So like this is going to be, if you guys can see, from here to here to one of these. So the batch is going to be how I export. And I try to do this in a top-down order. So then you can look from here. It's going to go into this open telemetry collector exporter. So this means it's going to do a type conversion. So it's going to turn it into Prometheus format. So let's look at this one. And we just configured the remote write. And then so the exporter Prometheus, this is going to take them in, convert it into Prometheus format. And then it's going to forward it into the remote write and send this to our Prometheus which I'm just using the host name on the container. From here, I can discover all those metrics label containers. And then what I do is I forward them into this uh, receiver. This is gonna mem put a memory limiter on it. It is gonna put it in open telemetry format, but then it's going to batch it, process it through, and then it's gonna send it back into this exporter and then forward it. So. Kind of doing a little conversion, but I just left it because it's doing the memory limiting and the batching. And then so this labels output, so this targets, it's going to grab these labels. So what I did is I tried to make it so you could set these labels like alloy.metrics.path. And then this will replace it with the metrics path it's supposed to scrape. And then so you can kind of set these with, you know, the interval you want, if you want to add any custom parameters, the timeout the scheme, if it's HTTP or HTTPS. Oh, and this should be a node name. Let me fix that, I forgot to fix that here. So now we kind of got through metrics, um, at least how it's gonna discover the containers. And then very simple, you can just set up a scrape. So you could configure the whole thing like you would the Prometheus. So I think I have mine open, no, I closed it. So. That's kind of how you can do it. You can, instead of having to deploy a Prometheus on, you can just set up a Prometheus scrape. And you can create multiple files. As long as it ends in .alloy, it'll pick them up. So you can have a Prometheus.scrape.alloy and then put all these in there and then all your manual ones. And then let's look at logs for the last one. So what we're going to do... We're going to do a file match. So this is going to find all the logs that match this. And then we're going to set up the write. So this is going to write to low key. Very simple. We also have this converter. So it's going to put from like a log format into an open telemetry format. Um, that's just in case you need it. And then from here, we're going to create a source from the file match. And then we're going to send it into the filter logs processor. And then we also have a Docker logs, which is gonna look at that alloy logs enable tag. And any of those that have it, it's gonna tail all of those logs. And then it's going to send that into the Docker relabel. So it's going to replace all of these. And then in your thing, you'll have container name, network name, network IP, um, the ports it's using. So that way you can filter by that. Um, when you're searching through logs and then it has a very simple filter logs that just will get rid of this noisy log that can pop up a lot and then i have some attributes that we add for loki oh yeah 
sorry, this attribute, this is for if you're sending in open telemetry logs. So let's look at that. Let's get back here. Sorry. So for the log side of open telemetry, we're going to come in through the memory limiter. And then we're going to go into the batch processor. And then here we go into those Loki attributes. So this will just add some attributes to the uh, log messages. Sorry, I thought this was something else. And then from here, it'll go into this receiver, do the conversion into the log format, and then write it to Loki. And then this log filter right here, this just right off the bat sends it right into the right. So from here, it'll just write it directly in. We also have some systems. So if you want to add certificates, you can. I haven't played around with this yet, but then you can change the log level. And then if you want to add tracing from your alloy and how your alloy is performing, you can also include the traces and then we just send them right into our OTEL pipeline. So it's gonna go right through. And I think that covers the standalone. It's kind of a lot. You definitely just have to play around with it. But once we set it up, then we can set up our alloy to alloy one. So now we're gonna focus on this one. And this one's really simple because what we're gonna do is just we're gonna take everything, convert it to open telemetry format, and then forward it into this collector. So that's what this one's gonna do. So same thing, we're gonna kind of set up our Docker discovery the same exact way. And same thing with the Loki logs, it's gonna have, oh, I actually need to add this back in. So we're gonna add these in to replace all of our labels. And this is kind of what you can look at if you wanna mess with these or get different labels. And then I do have this also configured, but we're gonna do it through the open telemetry receiver. And we're also gonna scrape all these log files because we wanna also do that on the other node. So that's gonna be the exact same. Um, the difference here is gonna be on the exporter. Instead of going to tempo, I'm going to the, the alloy open telemetry collector on the standalone one that we made. And then it has the same thing, same kind of pipeline, except this one doesn't do the service discovery graph. I didn't wanna do that a bunch of times and make more metrics. Since they're all getting funneled through the one, I'm just gonna leave it to that one to do it. So that's how this works. So very simple. If I receive a trace here, I'm just gonna put it in the memory limiter and then put it in the batcher and forward it over. Um, with Prometheus, we're pretty much doing the exact same thing. Yeah, the exact same thing. Everything is the exact same on Prometheus. Um, I do have my remote write in here, but that's totally unnecessary because we're going to just put everything into this receiver. So this is going to convert it into the Met, uh, Prometheus to open telemetry format. And then we're just going to shove it into our pipeline through the memory limiter. And then it'll go right on through to the next alloy. So that's what our, these are all doing. So these all go right, right into that receiver and right into the memory limiter. So system, exact same. Yeah, I think that's about it. The standalone one is a little more complicated. This one is very simple. So what we're gonna do is let's get it started. So I'm gonna call mine Alloy Desktop, and then I'm gonna do the config to Alloy. We've already deployed the other one. So we're gonna run Docker Compose up. And then it started, yours will pull it and then start. And then it's gonna find all these log files and let you know it's finished loading everything up. And then so what we can do now is you can go to localhost 12345, reload that. And then you can see your pipeline of how everything is configured. And you can also do this on multiple. So like here's our other one that's going in to the different sources. So you can like look at that one. Um, but what we're going to want to do, so you can enable this stuff. So I have my logs hooked up, so trace to logs. I'm going to set it to my low key instance, and then I'm going to do filter by trace ID. And then trace, so that'll, when you do uh, get logs for this, it'll just show you all the logs for that trace. And then trace to metrics, I just add my Prometheus that I'm sending them to. And then you can go to additional settings, enable the node graph and set it to your Prometheus you want it to use. And then when you go to explore, make sure you put it on the right one. And then you can go to the service graph and this will show you some devices that are already connected. 
And then you can see I have these alloy spans coming through. And then I also have like a traffic instance running. So this is also getting metrics on there. And what's cool is I was using the open telemetry collector and then now all I had to do was just make sure it had the same host name and I didn't have to change any services. So that's why I do want to explain this. That is why here I'm setting the host name as hotel collector and then I'm changing it in the environment variable. That's just because I have other services depending on this. So they're like sending it to this host name, this port. So that's possible if you need to do that. I'm doing it. And then what I have right here. So I've made this little demo project. What this is going to do is this is going to listen for mini IO bucket events. And then it's just going to make a Discord notification um, when there's an event. So the events I'm listening for, I think is in main. I'm just listening for bucket created and bucket removed. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run it. And then we're just going to make a demo bucket. And then it received that event. And then it popped up in my Discord. And then we're going to see this should be generating some traces. So what we should see now is it pop up here. And it might just take a second for it to go through. So I have this web hooker. That's what I called it. And then you can see I made some traces here. So I had the startup of it initializing. And I can say logs for this span. There we go. You can just add a JSON. So that'll JSON parse it, and then you can see all of the information. So I can see the span ID, the trace ID. So that's how you can kind of use it. Um, it also works for here. So now let's look at our logs. Sorry, I know this is a big video. There's a lot of information crammed really quick. You really just have to play around with it. But I can find this web hooker right here. We'll add a JSON parser. Then now I can see all the logs from this. Pretty cool. And then it's also working. So if I go to my dashboards, I can see my different hosts that I have running on here. These look like they're showing up. Um, I can look at some of these are in a different one in Kubernetes. OK, node exporter. So we'll go to char. And then you can see Prometheus scrape Docker containers. So you can see this is one of my, one of them I think is on my NAS, so it's not picking up all the metrics. It's on a Synology. I had to use a different SNMP exporter, which maybe I'll make a video on this because if you guys have a Synology, that was a huge pain to set up. Um, <laughs> so if you guys want to see that, I have a template for it. I can include. But uh, this is just a really nice way to handle getting all your stuff into Grafana so you can see it with kind of doing a little bit of work. So what's really nice about this is now that I have this one done, essentially what I can do is since I have the standalone done and the config to alloy done, I can just send these straight in to uh, any node I want, deploy it, and then it should just work. Like I shouldn't have to play around with configuring it. I basically just set up the host name I want and run it and it should be good to go and make sure I have all the labels everywhere. So I know this is kind of a little crazy video. We did a lot. I definitely encourage you guys to play around with this. See if you can look around. Um, you can use their docs. You just kind of go to their alloy component right here. And then you can look down in the reference components and you can see all the different stuff they support so they have all kinds of really cool ways of doing things this this was a lot of fun to configure let me know if you guys have any issues with it if you feel it, also with my docker toolkit project if you see any changes or anything you want to make feel free to make like a pull request to it i am totally open to that um i just want to make this project really nice so you can kind of come quickly set up anything you want like if you want a vault this was a lot of fun. Let me know if you guys have any questions or any future videos. Give me a follow and a like, and thanks for watching.